You know, the fifth gen iPod Nano was always an interesting iPod. It was the first Apple iPod or any MP3 player really to ever have a built-in camera. And during the keynote with Steve Jobs, the one more thing was used on this device. It was the first iPod to also have a built-in speaker, support for voice memos, and so much more. And it still retained other cool factors that the iPods always had, like that awesome click wheel. So it's everything that's currently happening around the world. Let's go ahead and take this opportunity and take a quick break and go back and revisit some cool, iconic, old school tech. And talk about the things that made the fifth generation iPod Nano so great. So the iPod Nano lineup was always an interesting device because it was always intentionally designed with one thing in mind, to make the device so small and slim that it could fit inside this pocket that nobody uses. And even with that built-in camera, this iPod Nano was still slim enough to fit inside that very small pocket. And honestly, nothing about this feels cheap at all. The hold switch on top functions just as well like when it was brand new, and the chrome bits is still shiny. But a common issue that I still remember from the iPods in general is that they are known to easily scratch over time. Which is why back when I was in school, whenever I see one, they always had like a bunch of scratches because these people were rebels and they didn't like using cases. So to give you a little bit of background, the motive on why it has a built-in camera is this. The iPod Nano was released back in the fall of 2009. During this time, handheld cameras were becoming popular. And this was a big selling point for the iPod Nano. Really, the flip camera was the only rival. And since the iPod Nano was so thin, portable, and lightweight, it had the upper hand. But unfortunately, the Nanos can only record video. It was not able to capture pictures. But did made up for it because there's a bunch of weird filters like this. It also has the old school shutter when you load it up too. Now the video resolution from this iPod Nano isn't anything that impressive. It shoots at 480p at 30 FPS. And although that might sound pathetic now, but back then, this was the standard for phones with a video camera. The only phone that was able to shoot high definition was this Samsung one. I'm not gonna bother pronouncing that, but just to give you an idea, that used to be the standard when it came to video recording on a cell phone. Especially when you take in consideration that the screen resolution on those devices wasn't HD either. Now the sensor that this 5th gen iPod Nano came with, get this, it's a 0.3 megapixel camera. Not even a full point. But even though this was a really small sensor, it's still somewhat impressive. I mean, I've seen terrible cameras that you could buy literally right now on AliExpress or something. And the iPod Nano still outperforms those. I mean, you can still identify objects. Not everything is a blur. And the colors doesn't look that far off. Although it does look like it might have a weird tint going on. Now it does have a built-in microphone, which actually does capture audio pretty well. It's hard to tell if this is a true stereo microphone. Predator vision right here. I doubt it really does. Yeah, there's no way my temperature on my hand is blue. It looks like it does it with the shadow. That's how it's able to get this predator effect. So the dark areas where shade is hitting, that's heat, I guess, for predator vision. And then where there's a lot of sun, no shade, it's blue. Still, pretty nifty effect, I must say. And when you're playing back the audio with this built-in speaker, it does sound like a stereo speaker, it doesn't sound mono at all, really. So even back then, Apple was paying attention to the speaker quality, which was great. But to this very day, it's still the only iPod to actually receive a built-in speaker, if you don't include the iPod Touch. Unlike the Apple Watch, you could listen to the music without having it plugged into any headphones, as it'll utilize that internal speaker. And if you flip the iPod sideways, you also have the iconic landscape mode, and you can use the click wheel to navigate through your albums. Now, unfortunately, I did have my 2011 playlist on this device, but I plugged it into my computer and I guess I had to wipe everything clean in order for me to use this again. So I lost all my old school albums that I originally had, which was really disappointing because some of those albums were albums that my friends gave me when I was back in school and now they're lost forever. But surprisingly, even when I had this plugged into my computer, I was still able to sync music to this thing. My latest 2019 MacBook Pro 
was still able to communicate was this 2009 device. In fact, it was still showing me the icon with the correct color model of my iPod on the screen. I'm really surprised that the operating system is still able to communicate with this old device. So internally, there's no built-in Bluetooth, which, which that alone makes this thing obsolete by a lot. The only way you get audio out of this device if you plug it in directly in the audio jack. But surprisingly, you can still have this plugged into your vehicle stereo system. Even a new vehicle from 2017, I'm still able to play my music out of this device with that 30 pin connector. And cool thing is about this iPod Nano is that it actually has a radio tuner, which only works and activates when you plug in the aux cable to the device. It utilized the wire to transmit the radio signals. To this day and age, it still works perfectly fine, but depending how good the radio signal is around your area, you may experience a lot of static, but it does have built-in radio playback, which is a feature that even the latest model cars lack. While you're listening to your radio, it's saving the audio. So if there was a song that played on the radio and you wanna go back and hear it, you could actually reverse the time and go back to when that track begins. So you could listen to the same song over and over again. It saves it right there. But when you switch to a different radio station, uh, it clears it out and it begins recording again. So I still remember the packaging when I used to go to a Target or something of the iPod Nanos. They came included in this clear box, but when you first open up the device, they came with these old school Apple earbuds, which was so iconic that I still remember even third parties were trying to copy and clone these earbuds. Now those earbuds, there's nothing special about them. I still remember. I personally disliked them because over time that grip that goes around the ear part would easily fall apart over time and they were really uncomfortable, nor did they even sound great to begin with. Then the 30 pin connector never was well designed by Apple. A commonly known issue, just like the earbuds, is they would easily fall apart over time. Usually between the six or 12 month, the cable starts to turn yellow and little plastic bits just incinerate really. Funny thing is the cable that I'm currently using, I picked up from the dollar store years ago and outlasts the $20 cable that Apple was charging. So the display on this iPod is a 2.1 inch display, which even in today's standard, I mean, this screen doesn't look that bad or outdated. The UI is extremely easy to navigate. This click wheel feels fantastic navigating through the UI. There's a bunch of extras as you can see here. We have your alarms, your calendars, clock, contact, fitness is where you can find the pedometer I was telling you about. You can actually backtrack and check your history, but since I never used this, there's nothing here. But there's also games, notes, stopwatch, the voice memos. And in the games, they always came pre-installed with a few games. Honestly, I never play these. I personally was never a fan of the games that the iPods came with. Like this one, I believe this is just a wheel that rotates. But I mean, even the load screen alone, this looks like I'm navigating through like a PS2 menu or something. Let's go ahead and give this game a shot. Raise the volume as well. Let's just raise the volume and play it like this. Resume. Okay. Ah, that's violent. But you can get an idea how the graphics of this era used to be like. All right, let me go ahead and end this. I don't want this to turn into like a 20 minute video, but there's Maze. Check out Maze real quick. I can't wait to resume back from over the years I had this thing. All right, how do you play this? Is the, oh, I gotcha. No, I'm not supposed to go on that. Oh, I get it, I was supposed to navigate through the maze. That's cool, it uses the gyroscopes. I'm surprised I never really played this. I have no memory of playing this game, but it also shows you the battery life as well. But yeah, just a quick overview on how well this small device actually did play. But again, hands down, it's the click wheel that really makes an iPod enjoyable. The click wheel came included in both black and white, but the black option was only available on the silver and the black, so like the darker models. All the bright colors, came standard with the white click wheel. But it really was the variety of different color options to choose from that made the Nano so popular, especially during that school, since everybody could find the best one that suits their personality. But in my opinion, out of all the Nanos that came out, the fifth generation was the one to own. Because the next two generation, like the sixth and seventh gen, they were more going towards the iPod Touch design than the iPod Nano. Yes, I do agree that the sixth generation iPod Nano was an awesome evolution, because if we take a look at the sixth gen, the sixth gen was basically the 
Apple Watch. It probably did lead to the Apple Watch, to be honest. But then after the 6th gen, the 7th gen got released, and that one shared more key components to like the iPod Touch. Because for crying out loud, take a look at this thing. It has a home button, a physical home button. It was more, it felt more like an evolution towards the iPod Touch, as I previously mentioned. And it took a bunch of awesome key components that the fifth generation iPod Nano originally had, like the built-in speaker. And of course, they took away the camera. And that alone is probably the reason why the fifth generation iPod Nano was the funnest iPod Nano Ever. Well folks, that's gonna be it for me. If you're curious to know how much these iPod Nanos 5th gens are selling right now in today's market, you could find them. Well, last time I checked on eBay, they're typically floating around the $20 to $60, all depending on the condition they're in. To give you a comparison, brand new, they used to start at $149. And that one was for the 8 gigabyte model. And then there was also a 16 gigabyte version as well, which that one was $20 more. So 179 is what they used to sell new. Why the extra storage? Well, you can store videos and movies onto this thing, but I don't recommend doing that because it is no longer supported. If you try installing a movie on this, the display is so small, any modern movie won't support it anymore. Even if you buy it directly from iTunes, I tried. So in today's day and age, this thing is only used for music to be honest, but you have to keep in mind, you have to wire this thing in because there's no built-in Bluetooth. But why would you wanna watch a movie on this small display? I mean, it still looks great. The colors still stand out but I wouldn't recommend watching videos on this. But now since the vast majority of us have smartphones, you're better off watching the movie on that device than this. Anyways, if you'd like to see more, make sure to subscribe and please feel free to leave a comment if this is a series that you want to see more of in the future. As well as feel free to comment down below on what other nostalgic device you want to see covered next time. Anyways, thank you once again for watching. Take care and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.